All right, so we just finished uh, the range trip with these three revolvers. I went ahead and uh, added this third one in. In the part one of the video, you just saw these two right here, but I had access to the 605, which is pretty much the same gun as the 85, but it's for 357 Magnum. So it's an all, uh, all steel frame. It's heavier, and it handles the 357 Magnum loads. Um, the weight on the gun is 24 ounces. So it's a good bit heavier. It's actually double the weight of the Ruger. So we have 14 ounces. Uh, I can't remember if this is 16 or 17, and then 24. Um, you'll see in the range footage that this gun being so lightweight um, really was a disadvantage with shooting. For carrying, this gun is definitely, I mean, no doubt about it. Without the hammer and with such light weight, the Ruger was really great to carry. Um, point and shoot was awesome. I did have problems with the <clears throat> ejector rod, the length of it. So it was just a little bit too short to get a really reliable uh, ejection or extraction. You can see I had several uh, problems getting those bullets completely out or the cases out, out all the way. Um, so that was a downside. I would say on this gun, pros, super lightweight, no hammer. Out of the box, it had the best trigger and the grip was really nice. I also like the sights on it. Um, when you're looking down through the sights, you can kind of pick up that the rear sight um, is molded. It's that molded polymer. And you can really tell, I mean, the, the sharp edges kind of kind of catches your eye and was distracting me a little bit. But not when I was shooting quickly. Um, the trigger it is more lightweight, but one thing that was getting me was when I would pull this, a little bit of my uh, the meat from my finger would get caught in this area and get pinched a lot, a lot of times if I wasn't careful. So I was kind of anticipating that, I found. Um, reloads with the speed loader were really quick. This cutout area here helped out a lot, especially with this little, uh, this little pla hard plastic insert. It helped the speed loader glide in and out a whole lot easier, but we did have problems with the ejection. And this gun, I had really great ejection. They all eject, seemed to eject um, great. Didn't have any problems with that, with the grip, with the one that I have cut out here. We had another one at the range that was just factory, and I, I had the same issue that I think I probably had with this one. But the longer st stroke definitely helped out a lot, and this extra little knurled bit on the ejection rod helped. Um, I could get I could get a much more positive and full ejection. So I think this is something that you really want to consider modifying this grip or possibly trying a different one. Um, the recoil on this gun was substantially higher. It was really uncomfortable to shoot. This is not a gun that I would want to shoot a lot. Um, this gun, on the other hand, even just the two extra ounces seemed to help out a whole lot. It just seemed like it really changed the way um, it felt and it was easier to shoot. The grip is a little bit thinner, but it is set back a little bit further, which I like because I have bigger hands. I feel like um, on this gun and this gun, I was just really kind of wrapping the whole thing up and it was just getting swallowed up in my hand. The sights were good. Um, trigger was great. I did notice the trigger was a little bit harder than this gun, but not noticeably. <clears throat> and then this one thrown into the mix. The added weight, you could really tell a huge difference. I mean, the recoil, um, I mean, it's double the weight of this thing. So the recoil was a whole lot more manageable. Um, two things I didn't like about this gun, the trigger is for some reason way, way harder um, than the 38 Special version, and I didn't like the grip also. So this has the Hogue grip, and you can see it's uh, pushed forward a lot more than the other gun. You can actually see the tang, or whatever you call this piece, um, on the frame there. So it's set forward a, a lot more. So I felt like I had a harder time pulling the trigger. I feel like I had to really stick my whole finger through there. Otherwise, I was kind of backing off like this and having all that dead space in there. Versus this one, you know, it kind of fills your hand up more. Hopefully that, I'm explaining that right. But um, yeah, the added weight, this thing definitely shoots a lot better. Um, I got a Wolf spring kit for the Taurus. So I think the added perk of the trigger on this one will be... Uh, you know, brought over to, to here when we get the springs in. So I think all the perks that I kind of liked about this one really was just the trigger. 
Um, I think this is going to be the perfect gun right here. And I had somebody else out of the range with me, and um, he felt the exact same way. We did a couple timed shoots on the shot timer, and we both shot this gun a whole lot faster. Um, so I hope I kind of answered your questions. If you're thinking about getting uh, a carry revolver, there's three different things you can look at. We have, you know, bigger and heavier, lightweight, and then the ultra lightweight. Uh, they were putting these things on sale for one about 190 189 and then they had a mail-in rebate. So I got this gun for like 150 bucks. It's really, really, uh, you can't beat it. As far as value goes, um, I think this thing is the way to go. So I'll do a separate video on the spring kit, and uh, we'll go from there. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching. I had a little bit of trouble getting that speed loader to let go, and that's because this grip is definitely not not uh, not rated for that. But um, still pretty good. Besides that, let's give the Ruger a go. Ejecting a lot better. Give the Ruger a try. Golly. Things have more recoil than I thought they would. It's 158 grain Freedom Munitions, three manufactured ammo. I don't know what the velocity is, but it's a pretty heavy bullet. Such a lightweight gun. We should have brought a, a full size 38 to compare them against. Did you bring your revolver? Yes. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, we should shoot it with these. So that short stroke on the Ruger is keeping me from getting my faces out all the way. It is faster on the reload. Shoot it right. Alright, next up I've got a Taurus 605, which is the uh, stainless 357 Magnum version. Um, of the 85 ultralight that we have here. You can see the added weight reduces any of this recoil. It is a whole lot heavier, probably twice the weight. recall on that one.
projecting really nice. A lot nicer than the, than the Ruger. on this trigger is killing my finger. I think it's getting, like the fat of my finger is getting pinched by the trigger. Hmm. You can really tell the recoil on that gun. Really? Oh yeah. It's a huge difference. More weight on this? Yeah, you can really tell. It feels like it's almost double the weight. I should look it up and see what the actual uh, weight difference is, but yeah, it feels like double. It makes a huge difference to our bet. It does, yeah. I, I didn't realize it, but then when I shot them all in order, lightest to heaviest, oh yeah, you could, you could tell a big difference. Good bit of recoil, huh? I lost one. Yeah, that revolver, the ejection rod is a little bit shorter, so it doesn't shoot them out like the other ones do. The trigger pull on that one's a lot harder, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I noticed that whenever uh, whenever this one came in, I was like, wow, man, that trigger is... Because I remember that one being so bad in, in double action mode. What's weird is with a light trigger, lighter trigger pull, but you know the kick's going to be harder, it throws you off the opposite direction yeah. from having a hard pull and not knowing that it's not going to hit as hard. Yeah. This one seemed more comfortable to me, though. Yeah, I think so, too. I really like I like the grip on this one. It has a, a recoil absorber actually inside here. If you take it off, it has a special insert. Wow. So I wish you could get that for, like, these guns. I, I need to get a Hogue replacement grip. Like yeah, the, uh, I think this one might be a factory Hogue. Yeah, it is. This is, this, this is a factory Hogue. So what I like about these is you can see... So my, this grip here, it sticks out backwards a little bit, so it gives you a longer grip. Yeah, and plus you're right on the steel there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I think maybe Packmeyer makes one. What do you think about this one, the, the Ruger? Uh, it's got a lot of kick, doesn't it? It does. Like, I don't even know, like, they market them for, like, women, but I don't know. I mean, with how light that thing is and how much it recoils. Well, I think the idea is the you're going to carry 99.99% .99 of the time, and you're going to shoot at .001. Yeah, you're right. They're you really lightweight. So it, it's just defensively. Yeah. I want to I wanna get a grip like my uh, the Judge has. That grip is so oh, yeah. comfortable. I wonder if they make those for these small frame guns. We should look it up. I don't know. It, that it, would be the perfect grip. Yeah, it would. Like It might stick out a little bit for carry, but it'd be, it'd be worth it. It would be worth it. This Taurus grip does feel pretty good. It's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit thinner than the other ones. Um, I feel like. Yeah, that... yeah I think the downfall of the 605 is the grips. The grips and the trigger. Let's, uh, let's do a speed load on. This had more of the palm swell in it. Yeah, I love that grip. I wish the Ruger grip was on the Taurus. But they don't fit. I think the thing is, like, you can get, especially with your hands, like, you can choke up here really far, but your finger won't.
bend as far as it needs to go, so you end up exactly. cocking your hand. Yeah. yeah, I wish the grips were a little bit longer. Because, yeah, like, like you said, like when I was dry firing in the house, I noticed that. Yeah. I would stick my finger in here, and by the time I pulled it, my finger's sticking halfway out the trigger guard, and my finger meat would get pinched. That's why you're getting pinched, because you're like... Yeah. You're holding it. And I feel like this one, the Ruger did it the most. I don't know if it's because of how big the trigger guard is. I'm not sure. You gotta. You see how much trouble I think you have more there room there. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah right. you can get trapped. We'll have to show that on the. Alright, I'm gonna shoot this thing down to that gong some and then reload with the speed loader. I think I was pretty much high, high and right on all mine too. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where these things are hitting. Way high. The ejection is really nice on this one. I just wish I could get the speed loader to work better. This is a three foot gong at 30 yards. Get at least one stuff, but it does reload really nice, it reloads really fast. Our thumb overhold, golly, a lot of recoil. Two stuck that time. Okay, I'm going to test both of these guns. I'm going to see just how fast I can unload a full cylinder. Not really going to be aiming, just trigger pull. Always oh, one stuck in there. Of course. That, the ejection on that thing is really hard to beat. This trigger is awesome though. I think after I put the wolf springs in, in the Taurus, I think this is going to be a really good gun. What was that? 205. 205? Alright, let's try it again. Try with this one. Uh, wow. okay, I want to get a good. I want to get a good, good run. Let's see if I can get under two. Two thirteen. Two thirteen. Ah, okay. So we'll we'll call it, we'll close them good. Out of five runs, I got two oh five. Okay. So Ruger, two oh five out of five runs. So two oh four. Two oh four. Okay, not bad.
five runs at least, not to give them unfair advantage. So that was number two. So three. Pretty much about the same so far. I bet you might be able to do better with that one. Yeah. Because you're not going to anticipate so much I recoil. I think that's, that's what it was with this one. I was worried about getting my finger crimped. And you can see, I mean, I have marks. It hurts. And your finger gets stuck in the, in the trigger, so. See if I can get it under two seconds. Two of four. Gosh, two of four. <laughs> that was about the fastest I could get all of them on target. Yeah. Okay. So your up, but your times. Yep. Two of four is not bad. No, two of four is pretty good, especially for all because they were all in the good, in about the same spot. I mean, pretty pretty close that time. This one is all over the place. All right, this is the last run. Too flat. Ah! <laughs> okay, we'll call that good. I love the way this thing reloads. This thing ejects so nice. If I could just make the grip perfect mm -hmm. for speed loaders, I'm really liking this Taurus. Can you cut that one out some, right? Yeah, I did cut it out. I may, I may get a replacement grip and see if it, uh, see if it helps. You know what? We're going to run the speed loader on this one. I didn't run it earlier. This one has a speed loader cutout, Ooh. so it might make it a little bit easier. Three. Five. Will you make sure my camera's still videoing? Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Do five runs with this one. Gosh, that trigger's hard. Looks pretty good. My hands get really tired. Oh, that trigger is so much harder. 2.3. I don't think I'm gonna. I'm just. I'm gonna run this one one more time. It's not gonna be. I wonder if you're, you're just fatigued. I'm fatigued, and this trigger is really hard. I'll let you do a run with all of them. Okay. I'm gonna do one on each. One what? Uh, one one uh, one round cylinder of each. Oh, it's okay. All right. Okay. Two twenty eight. That trigger is a lot harder. You can really tell when you're trying to shoot fast. Hey, you want to try mine and see if this is any different? Yeah. From here? Yeah. Yeah. Let's try that one. So we have another uh, Taurus eighty five ultralight. Um, exact same gun. This one's brand new. The other one, well, it was new, but I had done some dry fire with it and I modified the grip. So there's, see, see that part right there? That's the part I had to modify because the grip would stick out and the bullets would stick on it every time. You would have had 1.8 if not. Ah. It was 2.2. That was a good run. So, I mean, yeah, even when you mix it up, Taurus Ultralight seems to be the best one. So I imagine with that Wolf Spring Kit, yeah, it's going to be pretty quick. It's going to be a quick gun. Yeah. And there's that. I'll, uh, I'll let you load all the these up. The weight is really good on this. Yeah, I think, I think it's perfect. It's not as light as the Ruger. But it helps with the recoil. Yeah. That's for sure. The couple of, you know, just barely a few ounces. I think it's like two ounces. Good balance. Different. So here, I'll let you load those up and uh, I'll time you on those. How much was that? 
it's only like 12 bucks. That would help with this uh, time shot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you could get some shot down really quick. That was your fastest time was two on that one. Yeah. The, the, and that gun too, I mean, I think that gun would help because the spring kit is the same gun to gun. Because it's the same frame. So we can put the springs in that one too. Oh, cool. And that gun might be better then in that case. You know? Okay. Okay, I'm going to start the timer. So when I'm doing low ready, I'm holding it down, finger just off the trigger. Ready? Oh, that was fast. <laughs> 2 .3. Nice. Okay. 1.67. Ooh, that didn't feel that much faster. It was. Okay. I should have done this one first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 2.2. .2. Two. See how much harder that is? It is. That trigger makes a big difference. Yeah, I think I shot over the burn. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have had one that went over the 30 foot burn. That oh, sucker's wow. fast. That Taurus? It is. Yeah, I think with that spring kit, that's going to be killer. It's going to be a speed machine. Yeah, that thing's going to be awesome. Yeah, that. I like this way better than this. Than the Ruger? Yeah. yeah I feel, I feel Just the having way. the hammer, because if I need one accurate shot, that's it. True. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Say you're in a situation where you do have time to think. Yeah. And you pull your gun, maybe he's further than you're comfortable with. Yeah. Double action, you had the option of a single action. Or yeah, I'm, I'm liking that thing. I thought that I was really going to like the Ruger more, honestly. Coming yeah. into it, I was like, man, the Ruger's light. It's got this nice grip. I thought I was going to like that gun more. So I'm going to do two shots um, plus P and two shots the Freedom Munitions. You threw it with a shot timer? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Okay, first up, let's do the 605 357 Magnum. It's going to be uh, Freedom Munitions, 158 grain, and then a 124, 129 grain plus P hydro shot. Hmm. I didn't notice a huge difference. Move on up. Okay, so in this guy, I noticed the difference. For us, ultralight, you can feel the recoil difference in the plus P, but it wasn't that bad. Man, just everything about this gun hurts. Like my hand, my wrist, you can really tell the difference there. With this one, they felt the same. With the full stainless gun, I couldn't tell the difference. <clears throat> That's awesome. This one I could barely tell, and then the Ruger was just, yeah, just screaming at you. I think that that large quarter size mark is where that um, that hollow point. Yeah. yeah. Let's check that. Let's see. That. You'll bring the camera in. Uh, sure. I think those 158s are just kind of speaking us up too. So these are all 158 grain freedom munitions, and this is uh, 129 grain HST. We need to bring some soft targets out here next time. I've got a whole load of pumpkins that we can shoot. We've got about 100 rounds through both of these guns. I think that's pretty good. Well, more than that, maybe. All right, so uh, we'll take these things back to the bench, and while we're cleaning them up, talk a little bit about uh, what was going on today and what I think about them.